hire a teacher assistant for the kindergarten uh, in spite of the fact that there was a fairly well demonstrated need for one. And at that time, uh, we made some comments about the need for volunteers to step forward. And I'm happy to report that uh, they stepped forward from quite an unexpected source. Members of the central office, I believe led by Connie Brown, who's on vacation, uh, have each volunteered an hour or so of their time. And I understand there are, what, six of them? Actually, there's four of us, um, plus a parent volunteer, or actually two parent volunteers. And one of the volunteers is our superintendent. Mm -hmm. uh, so to all of those people who did volunteer and who filled that need, uh, the board wants to say thank you. Actually, it's our pleasure. Adjustments to the agenda. Anybody uh, on the board have any adjustments? After, Mr. Chairman, after the high school and middle school representatives make their presentation, I would like to comment on something. Okay. Anybody uh, from the public? I would just like to ask a couple questions about whatever point on the agenda, uh, some budget uh, uh, considerations or how the budget is put together, some questions on that, whatever point on the budget or the agenda that should be. Okay, I think probably the appropriate point for that would be after the superintendent has made uh, her presentation of the budget. Okay, no further adjustments to the agenda. Let me just make a note of that one. Approval of the minutes of the meetings. Uh, I have several comments. I bet Charlie has several comments. Anybody else have any comments? I leave my comments for Charlie. Okay, Charlie, you want to go first? I went first last month. On item, it's the meeting of January 15th, 1991. Item two, approval of the minutes. I believe it was Peter Leslie that requested that an incorrect vote recorded as 4-1 under item two of the previous meeting. It's not Charles Greer. That was Peter's, uh, Peter recognized that. I agree. I want to give him full credit. Well, thank you, Charlie. I noticed that one, too. What else? Okay, I have one on 5C, and uh, this is really a clarification. Uh, the high school principal informed us that 22 students had applied for early admission or early decision and that 13 had already accepted. I wonder if that is, had already been accepted or had accepted. Yes, Frank? Been accepted. Been accepted. Okay. Um, Okay, on point 8B, in the second paragraph, I believe it should say John Holt moved and Jan Solon seconded rather than John Holt voted and Jan Solon seconded. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, then I would entertain a motion that the minutes be uh, accepted as Amended. So moved. So second. Any further discussion? All in favor? The business manager's report, D. Thank you, Peter. Uh, page 48 in your agenda. All I, on the revenues, since this is not a uh, quarterly report, I'd just like to point out on the state revenues under the foundation allocation. We did receive the January subsidy in late January. However, we were, the subsidy was adjusted by $3,194. And to our estimate, this will continue through March and possibly through June 30th. And uh, we did get notification from the state that now the subsidy will be coming in at the end of the month and not the 20th of the month. So there is a great or a good possibility that come June 30th that we will have a receivable from the state for June and not the cash on hand, which you know the auditors will treat as 
as a receivable, which is fine. So it will still be part of our revenues for this year. Uh, but to date, everything else seems to be coming in on time. Uh, is it coming in on budget? Uh, actually, no. The, the only issue not, not coming in on budget was the balance of uh, the 304 we had anticipated. We're coming in on 193. Uh, we did get some, some uh, news last week, or two weeks ago, I called the, uh, the bank on the uh, sinking fund at the high school. It, is, it was retired February 1st, and we should be getting a check for approximately $40,000 for the interest that's due to Cape Elizabeth. And so that's, that's not a budgeted item, that's uh, uh, It was part of my miscellaneous revenue, revenues. Of the, it's part of the 55. Oh, okay. However, we will come in above that 55. All in all, I did a, a revenue check this past week. All in all, we will estimate a shortfall of revenue, revenues of about $70,000. Take into consideration the, the variance between the 304 and the 193 and the, the difference or play in the state revenue plus the miscellaneous revenues. Next week being a vacation week, I plan to, we, we spent the last couple weeks doing the, the budget process. Next week I plan to, uh, I'll explain the, the next two pages, which we've started the encumbrance uh, uh, accounts. <laughs> and next week, uh, we plan to go uh, like line by line and really look at these accounts and estimate a June 30th year-end balance. We're still in, in the vicinity of $50,000 as far as uh, our numbers, but with, with all the purchase orders coming through either the superintendent's office or my office for approval, we now have a, a, a good handle on what uh, what is coming to the district. So hopefully, for sure, by the March meeting, I'll have some updated figures on to, as to what we do anticipate come June 30th. But preliminary still show, my indication still show that 50,000 is, real, is realistic. Uh, the next two pages outlines the, uh, it's a new format, thanks to the new computer we got, uh, as far as the expenditures, where we, <coughs> we now list a column H and I, and J, which shows uh, encumbered amounts, a percent of expenditures and encumbrances, and then an account balance as of uh, January 31st. So taking into consideration, we have encumbered, uh, aside from payroll now, $161,000 in, uh, in last month. And what we've done with that, we've taken all the, P uh, the purchase orders that are, that are outstanding in our files, and we've uh, loaded them onto the system. We've asked the, uh, the special ed people to give us a year-end estimate of what their tuition amounts are going to be. Those are already loaded into the encumbrances, so we've taken a lot into consideration. Everything else is like uh, not on a purchase order or a payroll account. So to date, we have, we have expended $3.6 million or 59% of our budget, including the encumbrances. Uh, the following page summarizes the uh, federal and state programs. We've received uh, $136,000 to date. We've expended 65 with a $71,000 balance. The food service uh, account, as far as the cash to date in January, she had a profit of $2,957. And I might add that the, the, the school lunch staff this year are doing a super job. Uh, I think inventories are being looked at quite closely and the, the way food is being bought and I guess everything else. They're, and I think what happened to the adjustment in revenues as far as uh, the high school and the 10 cents that we went up to last year is, is a great help also. The following page though as far as the uh, food service gives us that fund balance and last year as of January 31st, we had a, a negative or a decrease in fund balance of $20,943. For the same period this year, as of January 31st, we have a, a positive cash flow or a positive fund balance of $1,827 or a variance of $22,770, which is a sizable amount of money. And that's all consistent accounting? That's all consistent. Uh, the next Three pages highlights uh, the community services report as of uh, the same period. And Sue and her staff at that point had taken in uh, $384,000 revenues and they have spent $254,000. So she's got a sizable amount of money there. 
but take into consideration a lot of her revenues are in and her expenditures are yet to, to come. Uh, the following page outlines your enrollments for, for February 1st with a, an increase of three students, all of them at the elementary level. I'm sorry. No, this, no, the three at the is, middle school. Is all, yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. Three from all three elementary. There's been a shift of three in every school, either plus or decreased. Yeah. But all in all, we're up to three, three students for the month. Uh, in the last four or five pages uh, kind of summarize our uh, energy accounts year to date. I did not, I heard your message last night about trying to put these into a shorter summary. I did not have the, I was on a couple of days last week because of uh, illness, but I so will was update I. these for you next week. I know, I heard you on the phone. So these will, uh, but all in all, as far as the uh, energy accounts, the, I think the transportation account of all three is the one that's uh, is uh, probably suffering the most because of the price of uh, gas compared to uh, fuel oil and stuff like that. Our uh, fuel oil account is, is not all that bad. With, uh, if we would uh, maintain with the uh, same, uh, well, I say not all that bad, we could, if we use the same amount of gallonage as we did last year, we could have a shortfall of $22,000. While the, uh, the buses transportation, we could have a shortfall of about five to six thousand dollars. Electricity and, and that we're still working with CMP as far as rebates. We're still uh, we need to modify our, our uh, meter at the uh, middle school that controls the high school and the middle school, so that we can uh, take uh, better readings of our demand, so we can control that. That's all I have. Questions. Seeing none, we'll move on to the comments by starting tonight with the, uh, the middle school. Uh, Rachel and Matthew. Um, I'm going to be starting out. Uh, sixth grade has had their second award assembly uh, when they honor roll, etc. Um, and Mr. Gorham, a volunteer science teacher, has just recently uh, won the Jefferson Award, and the whole grade is very happy about that. And the seventh grade uh, is starting a recycling project, and the sixth grade is also. Um, and the seventh and eighth grade boys basketball season is well on its way. Thank you. Okay. Um, the seventh and eighth grade swim teams also just started practicing. And on the 26th of February, the middle school magazine drive will start, which is a big fundraiser um, in middle school. And preliminary rounds for the spelling bee started. And that spelling bee should be held March 4th at 1.30 in the middle school gym. So you guys are all welcome to attend. And in the Thomas Memorial Library, there are middle school student displays of environmental projects that they made in Miss Susie Terrian's class, and you can go and look at them. And um, the middle school band has been invited to play at the general session opening of the New England League of Middle Schools conference on March 25th in Hyannis, Massachusetts. The Middle School Parents Association are covering the costs of this experience for the band members and their teacher chaperones. And the departure time is at 3.30 a.m. and they'll be returning to middle school about 3.30 p.m. And once again, like Matt said, the whole middle school is starting their recycling projects and each grade has their own theme. Thank you. The high school representatives, Lori and Jennifer. Good evening. <clears throat> this year, the Cape Elizabeth High School Theater Department has the honor of hosting the 1991 Regional One Act Festival um, in our area, the regional. It consists of about nine to 11 schools uh, uh, <laughs> participating, um, sort of competing 
so that they get a place in states. And states will be held in Limestone, Maine. That's over April 4th and 5th. So we're hoping that um, our play, Ernie's Incredible Hallucinations, will, will win a seat in that. Um, the annual blood drive was held on February 8th, and over 50 pints of blood were collected. Uh, many students and staff at the high school participated in that. And the French troop, which was scheduled for this coming, I guess it was when, February, over, has been canceled. But they're looking into the possibility of having the French students come here in April for the exchange. And the Spanish trip has not yet been canceled, but um, it's, it's very iffy, I guess. But they're thinking about the possibility of going to Mexico <coughs> to sort of compensate. But there's nothing definite been decided yet. The speech team recently won its eighth straight uh, state tournament last weekend in Bangor. And um, students took first place in categories including humorous, dramatic interpretation, and domestic extemp. The debate team will be holding their state tournament in early March, and then the district tournament will be held in late March to determine who will be sent to the nationals from Maine. We'd also like to thank Mrs. Goldman for attending our SAC meeting, and we hope that she, it gave her some insight into how the student advisory committee at the high school works. Thank you both. Charlie. It's always nice to see our school recognized for the accomplishments of like the speech, the speech club to be recognized as state champions. It's nice to see that our high school boys basketball team will, will also participate in the, uh, the regional final uh, for the cl Western Class B. It was really, I really got a good feeling the other day when I got a um, a tidings, which is a publication of the Gulf Maine Aquarium in the mail. And in that, it, it was a, a thank you to one of our third grade class teachers for something they had done and shared with the, with the, with the Maine Aquarium. And I'd like to read it. I want to first thank Mr. Ogden Williams' third grade class at Pond Cove School in Cape Elizabeth for sharing the fruits of their educational efforts with us. After a visit from Martha Agan, education director at the aquarium, and another visit from Bob Amadon, aquarium member and scuba diver, driver, diver, Mr. Williams' class put together an outstanding illustrated booklet called Sea Creatures in Fact, Poetry, and Theater. Each of the 21 students in the class studied a particular sea creature and then wrote a poem and made a drawing of that creature. Students also read a number of books about sea life and wrote and performed a play called In the Underworld, Underwater World. They sent us a copy of the book for which we are most appreciative. And, and I think that's really gratifying to see something recognized by the community at large for efforts of, of an educational nature that are going on in our system. And Mr. Williams' class was also recognized last year by the Main Street 90 for something similar, which was People, Places, and Times, A History of Portland and Cape Elizabeth, Maine. And it just to see that continuing and grow. That's great. Thank you, Charlie. I'm not sure if this is the first round of the main event or the, <laughs> the third <laughs> round of the main event, but the budget has certainly, in recent months, been the main event. Uh, we have worked quite hard on uh, in uh, December and in January to define the nature of our budget problem. Uh, and in the last uh, month, uh, the administrators and the superintendent have worked very hard in presenting a proposed budget for us, and now we're going to see it unveiled. Connie? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> before I do that, I would like to add to the list of congratulations. Um, I think it has been in the paper, but uh, uh, Dick Mullen, who is the English and Drama and Speech uh, teacher at the high school, is a semifinalist in the round of um, competition for Teacher of the Year in the state of Maine. Uh, and I certainly think we, uh, having seen some of his, the work that students do under his direction, it's not hard to understand why he is a semifinalist. Uh, the school will be visited and we'll be hearing more about that process later but I certainly wanted to uh, publicly acknowledge and congratulate him on that. 
So, onward and upward. I'm going to use the um, overhead, and we've tried to experiment a little bit, so I think the best thing we've got is to, to project to the wall, so if I could ask the board to sit in the front row. This is known as live theater. Looks sort of grandiose, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. Um, actually, I'm using this opportunity, uh, being somewhat unaware of what your policy or past practices are in uh, getting a budget season started. And I thought it was interesting to have a member of the um, public ask about process because that's exactly what I want to talk about. I do want to talk about the bottom line, but I also want to talk about process. Because I think the school budget is one of those uh, issues that is of some uh, uh, puzzlement to people. Where do we get our numbers and how do we put them together? I certainly will not be covering all the uh, intricacies of this in, in a summary presentation, but this is a way to get the process started. Uh, we are obviously going to be having uh, a series of workshops on specific cost centers. Um, we have published that list. Uh, we did have to make one change. I want to call to people's attention. The middle school workshop will not be on the 28th. It is going to be on Tuesday, March 6th, Nancy, is it? Pardon my, thank you. Mm. March 5th. And that, again, we have tried to publish that uh, widely, and we'll mention it again a couple times this, tonight. So essentially what I will be running through here is a general overview of the budget process and some of the pertinent points. And then there is a budget document available um, that we have extra copies here. If there are people in the audience who want one before they leave, um, just see Mr. LaBelle and he will give it to you. I want to uh, take this opportunity to thank the administrators, the school staff, the uh, all the, the staffs of all the schools. Um, clearly, I think Peter Leslie, uh, our board chair, uh, deserves um, a sincere and hearty thank you because it's his work that got us started on actually becoming more computerized and uh, giving us a better handle on things, obviously, Dee LaBelle. And I also want to publicly thank Bill Riley, a parent uh, and the um, consultant who actually helped us set up this model. One of the things about a budget that is extremely important is to understand, of course, that the budget is the skeleton of the planning of the school system. And it should be driven by goals and objectives. Uh, I'm not going to stand here and read through all of these. I'd like just simply to point out that uh, this is a summary document not only for the members of the school committee and the uh, staff of the school, but also for the community. You should be able to turn to the budget document and see, in essence, a kind of outline of what the, uh, the priorities of the system are to some degree and also where we're putting our resources. And uh, when we come back year after year to talk about increases or decreases, it should always be in mind that it is tied to our goals and objectives. I think it's important here that we are fiscally responsible, educationally sound. We do want to be responsive to parental concerns. I recognize there are times when parents wonder if we hear what you are saying or if, in fact, we have heard but not been able to uh, implement the program or change things for your particular child. I do want to take 
a moment, and I'll mention this again as we go through, it is always important to us what you think, and we do want to encourage sound dialogue back and forth. Um, we have physical resources to be concerned about, maximum staff productivity, optimizing human resources, and if you can't see that last one, it says to, we'll continue to improve upon the quality of education in Cape Elizabeth. Those in general are our goals and objectives. And specifically, my agenda this evening is simply to try to introduce the fiscal year. 92 school budget maintains the high standard of Cape Elizabeth schools without placing an undue burden on the taxpayers of this community during difficult economic times. All of those considerations are important to us. When we start about talking about budgets, we sometimes leap over one of the most important things to remind ourselves, and that is the quality of the school system as it now stands. And the fact that it is a quality school system doesn't mean it's perfect. It means that there are very strong things, uh, and you just heard a couple of uh, recognition pieces tonight. Um, and I, I do believe it's important to note that the fact that we are talking about academic preparation for post high school in no way is intended to indicate that we uh, are simply concerned about preparation for high school, but excuse me, preparation for college. That is, however, a strong strand. Um, and I think I would also want to point out that that is lifelong learning because not all our graduates go to college right off or take advantage of uh, post high school opportunities. It's important for all our students to be equipped to do that should they choose to do so later. Um, you are aware, I know, about the main educational assessments. The scores from this community are consistently strong. They do, in fact, vary somewhat from year to year or from class to class, but from a statewide average, they are consistently uh, above and usually well above the state average. Just to remind you of those things. And again, um, just take advantage of the uh, opportunity to remind you that there is an opportunity for aesthetic enrichment and a full range of athletic programs. Sometimes we are we're questioned about whether or not athletics is uh, something that should be included in school budgets. And certainly not an argument I want to get into this evening. I think, however, that it is uh, arguably an important part of our youngsters' um, high school years and uh, also middle school years. Certainly, this is not an attempt to do anything more than to highlight a few of the, of the specifics that the school system has been working on over the years. Um, question, why does Cape Elizabeth have such a good report card? And by the way, if you're unaware, the statistics that I just briefly summarized in the previous transparency come from something that the state publishes for all school districts, known as the state report card. There are a number of interesting statistics in that summary. Um, we, we mention it when we get it uh, in the fall and make it available to people if anybody would like to look at it uh, in more detail. We have copies in my office. These, however, are indicators of uh, particularly academic development. Um, small class sizes, strong art programs, elementary through high school foreign language program, K through 12 emphasis on the writing process, initiation of curriculum committees, coupled with intensive staff development, particularly for elementary teachers, and the high school maintaining a solid academic core and outstanding fine arts programs. And we didn't have room to get all the social development in there, but much of what's in there under academic development is really tied to social development. For instance, a shift at the elementary level to be more sensitive to child development programs is not simply uh, doesn't stop at the elementary level. Our aim is to make all of our programs sensitive to individual needs. Um, again, we're not saying that we have reached all of those goals. We are reminding you that they are goals and indicators of what we're working towards. Uh, Again, this is my, you know, I, I haven't prepared a budget for the Cape Elizabeth community before, so I may, in fact, be repeating some things you already know, or possibly this is the first time you've heard these things, but I thought it might be useful to include a uh, sort of a summary on what appears to have been a budget methodology, uh, which emphasizes more the separateness of different pieces. In other words, preparing budgets by asking each building or the transportation foreman or the special ed director 
uh, building maintenance and so on to prepare individual budgets to have them reviewed individually and only at that point finally to present to the board and bring them together. Our goal this year was a little different and I'd like to go into some detail on that. <coughs> This is an attempt, at least, to suggest that we are looking at the entire uh, system. And I, I will go through this in some detail. I, uh, if you notice, the team of administrators is uh, gender equal. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's accurate or not. Um, the, we really do feel we have put this together as a team with input from a number of, of uh, pieces, and I'll try to summarize that process for you. Superintendent Board Council estimate total funds available as a team. The superintendent and every department head determine the system's long, short and long-term needs and what is best for the entire student body. Now, obviously, that's not just up to us to decide. We have gone to the buildings. Uh, I know that the principals uh, have had long conversations with the organizations that they uh, use in order to get input, feedback, and so on. That is, whether it's a team structure within the building, department head structure. Uh, we've invited parents to come to those meetings. We've asked people to give us some input and feedback. So we're not simply talking about uh, an administrative group. We do have the responsibility for putting these pieces together, but we have sought input from a number of sources. Drafted a uh, proposed budget. Uh, at this point, we have made some adjustments among ourselves, have compiled and created what we hope is a responsible total budget, and now, of course, we are presenting it to the school board for their review. And I have a couple of slides here to talk about the budget process overview. Obviously, I may not hit on the exact pieces that people are interested in, but so please feel free to answer, ask questions when I finish. Um, obviously, uh, schools are year-to-year -year enterprises. We don't just stop functioning and then start up from scratch. So that we are looking at a uh, beginning by examining last year's expenses. We do a fair amount of estimation of what issues we're likely to see in the upcoming year. We never are able to guess everything, but we have, of course, a grasp of what the normal kinds of things are. You'll notice that the graph really makes very clear that the huge lion's share of the budget uh, is in personnel costs. And if you add in the costs of uh, benefits as well as salaries, including uh, some people costs that are not necessarily under contract, such as consultants and substitutes, it's 83% of the entire budget. So that whenever we're talking about budget problems, we're talking about people. Uh, very little we can do to shrink uh, the amounts of dollars going into supplies and buildings and what have you, although you will see that we have done the best we can with that. Following on the process, estimating the total dollars available using state funding projections and a 5% tax rate increase as a guideline, identify a team of professional staff, administrative council, and department heads from the entire K-12 spectrum to work on the budget. Again, as I want to emphasize, they are not, these are not decisions being made in a vacuum by a uh, closeted group of people. This is a process that has a lot of feedback uh, in the building discussions. Continuing with the process. Now, team in this over series of overhead may be a little confusing. Some buildings, of course, are, and in fact, the, all the elementary buildings talk, use the term team to mean a group of teachers, and you can read that in there if you wish, but the team specifically talking about here is the administrative council, superintendent, obviously, um, and uh, business manager. Uh, we have re tried to review the goals and objectives as we understand them. Again, as a person new to the scene, I am not uh, really in a position to judge those and picking up where those have uh, but some of them are very evident just from walking around the buildings, talking to teachers, watching the programs, and from an examining an examination of past budgets. The board sets priorities by determining the way it wants to use resources so that when you adopt a foreign language elementary program, you have made a statement about a priority. Um, 
We have tried to use a kind of zero base uh, budget approach. Now I say kind of because um, when you think about the 83 percent that goes into people costs, we aren't just automatically wiping everybody out and starting over again. But we have asked the uh, principals, department heads, and, and the teachers to look hard at their normal list of requests for textbooks, for supplies, for equipment, and not just to automatically ask for the usual 5 percent increase, but to look hard at what they have as their more imaginative way of using it, combining, and so forth. So that that is what I mean by zero base here. We have really tried to go back to base level and ask ourselves, is there another way that we can combine our resources and get the same job done or virtually the same job? Team leaders seek advice from the staff at the high school. We, I understand uh, we also included student representatives. Um, at uh, January, during January, the members of the administrative team submitted individual budgets to the superintendent. Uh, it says negotiations between superintendent and team. I thought those were rather pleasant discussions. I didn't quite see them as formal negotiations, but um, we do go down line by line, ask a lot of questions um, since I was new, I asked lots of questions, um, and draft a budget that meets all the goals and objectives. I always worry about all. I, it's, it's an attempt to do that. I think we'd be safer to say as many as we can. Some of our concerns in budget process. It is really important in dealing with a budget to look at the whole system. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, I think that all school systems have a fair amount to go before we really learn how to think about that. But we've tried to uh, explain to teachers, I know I was present at both the Pond Cove and the middle school explanations, and I know the same, similar things happen at the high school, where the entire budget was discussed with staff so that people weren't just looking at their one corner, but were trying to see where that corner fit into the whole picture. And again, I remind the community that we do run uh, a bus service and we run restaurants. Uh, you know, there are aspects of the school business that sometimes one doesn't think about unless you're looking at the whole budget. Uh, some of the recommendations on class sizes, we were particularly concerned to keep the kindergarten, first and second grades as small as possible. And in this particular proposed budget, we have maintained that um, goal. We are upping the class ratio in some of the uh, upper classes, but uh, still well within the policy guidelines that you have set out before. We've worked together to uh, try to develop less expensive programs that are not compromised in their outcome. <coughs> we did listen to the uh, feedback from parents at uh, various curriculum nights we have. We've tried to put together a plan that we'll, we hope will uh, uh, address some of those. And I, we really try to be creative in using the talent we have. I think it's also important when you're dealing with ongoing budget pictures uh, not to keep changing direction. Decisions are made carefully. They're made for a rationale. Uh, resources are, are devoted to them. And it is important for us to evaluate what's happening. If we uh, simply start anew every two or three years, we are really in a ping pong ball tournament and not in an ongoing, slowly developing and improving situation. So all of those are part of our concern. Here are some examples of the uh, ways in which we have tried to be somewhat creative. Uh, to decrease administrative costs, you will see in the uh, budget summary, we are, uh, I am proposing part of this budget is to restructure the curriculum coordinator position. We have gone through the expense of the startup period, which is sort of a phase one. Can now recognize efficiencies and maintain good work uh, with a carefully executed, executed phase two. And you can read some of those things. Actually, I don't like the use of the term subordinates in there. That was uh, put in from the standpoint originally of a discussion of um, the uh, actual way in which you might chart out an organizational chart. Our organizational chart is changing from a kind of uh, notion that there is somebody in charge who then has people do things to a much flatter idea with people working together. Uh, at the middle school we looked at a problem that we hear a great deal about from parents, that is 
increase the length of class periods? Uh, we have a situation now where a rich variety of offerings, but the academic periods are very short. So that, in fact, what we were trying to do was to uh, solve that problem, and we also, um, you will see, have made a recommendation that is partly driven by budget considerations and partly driven by an attempt to address an overly busy student schedule. I think it is important to note that the faculty in every school worked in unison to lower supply costs over $28,000. I'll point that out in the summary. So, looking at the budget as it stands, estimating the total budget. Now, these are, of course, without the last three um, ciphers, zeros. So we're going to be reading that as 8,887,000. And if the, uh, the year-end cash spent, now this is referring to the fact that we had a rollover last year. It turned out to be less than was originally estimated. And when you take it all into consideration, it is the 194,000 uh, minus what we believe to be a reasonable cash balance estimate at the end of the current budget year, so that we would have spent this fiscal year somewhere in the neighborhood of 9,031,000. Don't, if you lose that, don't worry. Uh, then the summary's all along here. We're trying to be user friendly. And there's, it's also written in the handout. So the, what is in on top of this particular sheet is a summary of what I just pointed out till we get down to the subtotal. Now, if we add a 5% inflationary increase, we come up with 452000 so that the 1991-92 status quo budget would be 9,483,000. Now, this series of slides uses the term extraordinary to really make the point that these are over and beyond, above the, the kinds of things you might normally expect. I will be talking a little bit later in this board meeting about uh, two issues, one on the uh, middle school roof that uh, had the the uh, trust is dismantled in the fall. It's still sitting there, and we still have some resolution of that issue ahead of us. I have a report of an estimate of about 80000 to solve that problem. But as you'll, if you're here for the rest of the meeting, you'll know that, note that that's, um, not, there are some options there. But that is at least one of the, the uh, reasonable costs for that project. We also have some ongoing problems with our portable structures, and uh, we have a report on that. And for now, I'll simply note that it will take about $60,000 to correct those problems. The contractual obligations are referring to the career ladder placements. And we have mentioned those in previous discussions of our um, projected budget increases. And they add up to 341000 so the status 9192 status quo budget with these extraordinary expenses would be 9,824,000. Again, what is at the top of the sheet is a summary of what I've just been through and picking up where I left off. Just try to position it as well as I can so you can see it. Um, we subtract the extraordinary revenue, uh, and there is increase in state funding. And this is one of the pleasant surprises that has uh, come along in the last, actually, we received a printout about two and a half weeks ago. Now, the state funding situation is, in fact, one that I cannot predict. I cannot uh, give you any firm figures on it, but, in fact, uh, we are according to state formula, supposed to receive $270,000 in state aid more next year than we have received this year. Uh, don't let that minus um, startle you there. That means we're actually getting more, but it's used as a minus to deduct the, uh, from the status quo budget. In addition, we anticipate about 59000 in other revenues. So the status quo budget now, with consideration for out of the ordinary items, both additional and additional revenue comes down to about 
9,495,000. In other words, what, I, what we have done with this so far is to anticipate the extras that we would have to add, not only a 5% increase, but the uh, building repairs uh, and the fact that we had a rollover that we won't have again next year, and now we are pointing out that we have additional revenue, uh, which does in fact help us, as that points out. However, that particular number was still uh, above what our target goal of no more than 5% increase on the tax rate. And uh, we have in this, uh, in the packet and in this presentation, I'm really calling them round one and round two changes because uh, administratively this process puts us together a number of times. We look at our target uh, expenses and then we try to figure out what we can reasonably do to meet that problem. This is a summary of the cuts that the building principals made in their budgets when they first presented them to me. And uh, in the packet, we have some notes, and I'll, I'll show them to you in a minute, but they probably make more sense as you listen and then and review them in the written form. Uh, line one with substitutes and consultants, line two with stipends, co-curricular, and athletic. Um, there are a number of things that we have not decimated the athletic program or the co-curricular program. As these are just a many, many different pieces that have been added up that yield this. I might point out that with, between those two lines, the fact that there has been a double expense uh, as a consultant for the superintendency role is, is part of the uh, decrease. Presumably, you will only need one line for that next year. Um, we have some additions in our budget for buildings, including repair and maintenance, transportation and food service, and debt service. But there is a net decrease considering additions and deletions of 84,565,000. Now, this is essentially the first round of adjustments we made to the budget. Just to recap slightly what some of those things are based on, you'll notice on those items there are some notes to let you know where some of that came from. We had a, uh, a, a really a large effort in summer work at the elementary level last year which has virtually been eliminated this year. There's some money, a small amount for some work at the middle school, but the, um, the elementary effort that went on last year will not go on this year. Um, and you can see there are a number of specific items there that are included. Uh, we did, for instance, uh, in our original budget, we had a provision for an oil tank replacement. Uh, the law gives us another year to do that. Frankly, it's not going to be done this year. We did take it out. And uh, we decided to uh, purchase a bus on a three-year lease rather than try to come up with the uh, uh, total amount. And again, on busing, we had a brief discussion about that at the time when we asked for board approval. Um, the economy of not buying a bus at all wears very thin very quickly. You can have your fleet all wearing out at the same time. So even in tough times, you try any way you can. Sometimes it's a three-year note to keep that up. Round two changes. We looked at our budget. We still had a ways to go. And so here is where we're getting into the more difficult kinds of things. And we have tried to do it, as pointed out, in the most um, creative way we could. Deletions. We will need the numbers, by the way, are, are references to um, notes in the second page, which I'll show you in a moment. In essence, we have some grades that are bigger than others. And in preparing for an incoming grade, uh, we can see the opportunity to uh, cut back on the number of staff or to raise at least slightly the teacher pupil ratio. We'll be reviewing that, of course, in the building budget. Um, the one half that should not be industrialized, we don't teach it at K 5, that should be integrated arts position. Uh, one half foreign language, which is achieved by uh, actually cutting down the number of times the youngsters are. Uh, receiving instruction, it does not cut out any single grade level or class. Uh, in addition, we will need a .5 fifth grade. We have within the staff, we have the capacity to cover the other half of that. 
and we also will need one more first grade. Our kindergarten is much larger than the current first grade and will certainly call for that kind of an addition. Uh, we feel at this time that a fourth and fifth grade or something perhaps third, fourth and fifth grade, but more likely fourth and fifth uh, halftime remedial position, which the system has had in the past and has and moved away from, that it would be advisable as a program improvement. So we are asking for that. But notice again, this, this is an attempt to show you how you can make a cut make an addition and then figure out what your net result is. And some of this is by moving people around, but in all cases what you do, what we do is to eliminate the position, add dollars for the positions being added, and arithmetically arrive at a net dollar saving, and it does add up. Uh, in the middle school, we, we really decided to combine a budget need and a desire to attack what some people have described as the overly busy schedule of students at the middle school. Uh, we had to go through this year uh, with, a, with a schedule that yielded about 35 minutes for academic periods, which we felt was not advisable. Uh, the only real uh, way to address that is to shrink back on the numbers of times that youngsters are leaving class to go to something outside the core group of classes. We did not, however, want to reduce um, to nothing or to eliminate any of these programs. They're all fine programs and so our choices at the moment uh, are as follows. We have dropped a uh, position called computer specialist, although you'll notice over under additions, we feel that we can uh, get the job done by using a portion of a teacher's time. Um, we are uh, dropping the integrated arts program at the seventh grade level. Um, and there was an associated teacher aid uh, attached to integrated arts. The allied arts reduction will come from the schedule itself. We estimate it to be any, probably in the neighborhood of one quarter time. It might possibly be as much as one half, but it is more likely to be in the neighborhood of one quarter. Um, the additions, the incoming seventh grade is large. We'll need another teacher. Um, we are formally putting into the budget a math position that has been covered by uh, Michael Efren and the computer teacher, as I mentioned before, and a general purpose teacher aid, which was cut out of last year's middle school budget and we are proposing to try to reinstate that. At the high school, we have a teacher assistant drop, uh, half of a science class, four-tenths of a substance abuse uh, consultant position. Um, we're dropping one, actually what the two-tenths amounts to is one math position, a piece of a math position. Co-curricular activities and supplies, two ninth grade teams, I uh, believe those are soccer and basketball. I, do I have that right, Frank? Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, we do have more sign-ups for French that we can cover with current staff and that will require one class to be covered by an additional French um, resource, probably coming from within the system. System-wide, we are uh, recommending the deletion of the curriculum director position as it now stands as a general K-12 all subject kind of, of a central office position. I want, I want to emphasize that the uh, work that has been going on in curriculum in this system is extremely important and in some respects has only really just formally started as an organized approach. Uh, as we review the situation and speaking for myself at this point, as a newcomer to the situation, I felt particularly strongly that we ought to make an effort to focus on where the priorities were and to keep the forward momentum of curriculum direction. And so the proposal is to eliminate the position, a central office administrative position of curriculum director, uh, and to use the opportunity that we had uh, available to us with a resignation in the math program at the high school, two of the classes that are covered by uh, the retiring teacher will be covered by a teacher coming back from sabbatical. Two of them I am proposing to have covered by Ms. Jaffron, who has a background in math and has been working with a math curriculum. And one, frankly, uh, uh, Frank Fields will be not needed given the population going into the high school. So that adds up to a cancellation of one program, uh, technically some of the money going back over here as a math coordinator. Uh, the model I that we're talking about is one that uh, reinforces a model already in place in the system. Teachers who are part-time teachers, part-time resource people to other teachers. 
In this case, we felt that math was a high priority, that a great deal of effort and resources have been spent on looking at your K-12 math spectrum, but we haven't had any uh, one person outside of the curriculum director, generally speaking, to uh, pull some of those pieces together. We have a department head at the high school. We have a small amount of math direction uh, with Charlotte Hanna, also a teacher at the middle school, and Gary Record at the elementary who is a teacher plus resource person. Um, I am not as familiar with the system as I might be, of course, at this point, having been here four months. At the same time, I am familiar with a lot of attempts to do curriculum work, and that model of teacher resource person is a very strong model. I recommend we at least try to stay what we can. However, all of these pieces, and let's see, wait a minute, let me get this so you can see it. Um, I'm left-handed, that's my excuse. I always push it in the wrong direction. There is a grand total of reduction of 185,152 from all of those to try to show graphically. Uh, again, I'm not sure whether seeing them in this setting, they make a great deal of sense, but they are in the booklet. Dollar comparison of expense categories, again, it's just overwhelming when you look at the issue. There's no way we can do budget adjustment without dealing with salaries. And with personnel, here is a comparison of non-salary related items, just to show you. Uh, again, when we tackle Cutting down supplies, we're really dealing with a small part of the budget, buildings including heating and so forth, uh, transportation, debt service, and other smaller parts of the budget. And simply a percent comparison of expense categories. Again, those are in the booklet and I think probably in the setting of the state. And here is sort of the bottom line. The these are pieces, again, that I've already run through, but this is a way to kind of summarize it. If you look at the current budget, you add uh, the fact that we were really uh, having a year-end cash spent, uh, estimated cash balance, you get a subtotal, add that into that a 5% inflationary increase, giving us a status quo 91-92 budget, add in extra expenses, uh, an additional approximately 341,000 so that we, w we started really with a budget of 9,824 as a possible 9192 status quo budget. Once we begin to uh, whittle that down, we are, are going to get extra, we hope, again I have to emphasize it's only hope, extraordinary relief in the state, in the, uh, to the tune of state funding, 270,000, some other revenues, 59,000 subtracting uh, both round one and round two changes from our budget discussions, we are down to 9,225,000. And since the uh, target of 5% tax increase from the town is at 9,200, we are only 25,000 over that target at the present time. And another way to summarize that, and this I know is going to be hard to read, and again, it is in your printed handout, but I will try it anyway. We have total expenditures. I want to point out a couple of things. The first line, this is total salaries and benefits, and then if you follow it over to an estimated 91.92 with an increase of 4%. That is not intended to imply in any way that there we, we have a solid figure and that we just added 4% to it. This figure includes substitutes, consultants, uh, myself included, for instance, uh, some items that have been dropped uh, fairly large items that have been dropped so that this is a summary of a lot of changes in that line and does not include a just a certain arbitrary okay uh, increase. I should also point out that we are in negotiations or will be in negotiations with all but one unit of the employees of the school district which means that what we have to do in these circumstances is to put in a sum of money. Whether it is enough, I cannot tell you. There is no way that any superintendent can assure any board when we are in the negotiation process of exactly what it's going to take to settle. Naturally, we try to put in as much as we can 
or what we think is a prudent amount. Under the circumstances, this may not be enough. I do not know, but it is a prudent amount. Um, you will also notice, and I think I want to call to your attention if you can see it, that in comparison with the 90-91 budget, um, the supply line is actually 5% less than it was last year. Now this is a kind of round one change I was talking about when we were talking about the good work that the buildings have done to really examine in a zero base way what they need. Not only did they overcome a 5% inflation factor, but they actually decreased the amount in comparison to last year by 5%. And I urge them not to do this uh, in any way in a uh, sense of depriving our students. They simply went to the closets, looked hard, <laughs> and counted, and we tried to uh, make do. Uh, and we feel we have a responsible uh, amount of money in there. However, I have to point out that we will probably scrape those closets bare in the course of the next year. Um, I think probably the rest of that's fairly self-explanatory, uh, except when we get down to the contingency line. Uh, you didn't actually have a line in your budget last year that was called contingency, but because you had a large turnover in staff and in many cases lost a teacher who was either at the top of the scale or close to it and hired in a beginning teacher, it did yield a kind of contingency fund to the degree that is up there, the 111. This budget does include a contingency line that you see right there. And the reason it does is that with our computer model now, we are putting things into the penny. We are estimating as best we can, given the contract status that we're dealing with, salaries, benefits. We are counting and double counting to make sure that we don't have anything extra and we don't have anything left out that we've got to get in there. Um, I know full well, having run a school system now for eight years, different school systems, you never know what's going to happen. And to be running a $9 million business with no contingency and a bare bones penny counting kind of budget is just unreasonable. Therefore, I would be afraid to go ahead without a contingency fund. Now, I know how vulnerable contingency funds are, but that's what I believe to be a prudent measure. You will see that the total budget then is up 3.8%. And as we look at the revenue and tax impact, and I think tax impact, of course, is sort of the bottom line. I don't know if I get that any clearer or not. It's a little better. The increase in state revenue really looks larger than I, I gave you. The reason it does is that we also received property tax relief money last year. And of course, that's long gone. So uh, the final figure, the, you know, the, the net figure is the 270 that I mentioned. Um, and um, obviously the cash balance is that you didn't really have the 304. That was an estimated, but when the budget was put together, that was the estimation. Uh, we're certainly not estimating that anymore. Um, and uh, then when you get down to the tax impact, town valuation, one of the reasons we're getting more money through the state formula should we get it? And I have to keep saying that because I want to remind people that this is a situation over which we don't have much control. Um, that uh, that's the reason we're getting it, among other things, that the town valuation has not risen and therefore uh, it increases our subsidy. Uh, mills raised in um, uh, school support. The uh, increase in local costs from the school budget last year was a dollar and a quarter. The budget that I've just summarized for you increases the local effort 63 cents and in fact the target for the t from the town council is a 58 cent increase so we are pretty close. Uh, that 25,000 over the target is amounts to about a five cent um, situation. Now clearly in reviewing piece by piece and to try to further understand and ask questions of the building principals, the staff as to, you know, the uh, recommendations we're making here tonight or any other of the issues that are dealing with um, uh, staffing and the buildings. We'll be looking forward to an opportunity to share that. And frankly, that is my presentation. If somebody has a question, um, do you want me to take it now, Peter?
Well, I have asked each building administrator to put together what I think I call the doomsday list. Um, frankly, um, and we have had some conversations about that, yes. Um, I felt that it was prudent not to necessarily push that at this time because we have gone as far as we can go. Some people may argue we've gone further um, than we might, although we, do, we have tried hard to make these responsible cuts that still maintain the integrity of our programs. Um, beyond this point, and it's arguable, there might be, you know, it's, it's sort of like every piece is going to come harder and harder. Uh, the issues are obvious. We either, uh, you know, we have a combination of going back at the elementary school and upping the class ratio again, um, cutting out additional programs, not just shrinking them but cutting them out. Um, I don't, we don't have a great deal of options. Mm -hmm. Did I answer your question about process? Well, no, I be able to hear you. Why don't you come to the microphone and anybody else who wants to speak come to the microphone? Because otherwise I think the people on, that are watching at home will not be able to uh, hear the question. Connie, the, the question I had with regard to process was in going over reviewing your uh, the, the calendar that you have for how the budget is going to be developed. I don't see any place in there until the very end when a parent or a taxpayer, as I think in your goals and objectives, you indicate is responsive to parental concerns. And I'm wondering if that maybe should be there, an opportunity for other citizens of Cape Elizabeth as well as uh, parents to be involved in this process. But it seems like that's at the very tail end. And I, my question on process is, when are parents and citizens going to have an opportunity to give input as to what they would like to see included, what we are willing to pay for, what we feel as parents are priority, uh, and where, where our suggestions are going to have an opportunity to feel the impact, as opposed to doing it at the tail end and maybe having re a repeat of the emotion we had last year, uh, would it be better if the process was one where we'd have an opportunity at the, as, the process, as the budget was being developed? I think, first of all, uh, that there, the goals and objectives of a uh, school district are really ongoing, and that the almost daily, certainly weekly, and periodic interchange between teachers, staff, and parent is in uh, is one of the most powerful ways in which parents uh, give us clues as to what they're interested in and so forth. Um, but having said as much, I hear your concern about a formal piece of a budget process. Um, and frankly, the normal business procedure uh, and what is, I think, a responsibility of the superintendent is to make sure that there is a reasonable process within the staff, within the people who are closest to what it's going to cost to run what we now have or some variations on that theme, uh, and then present it to the school board. Now, by statute, the school board is elected to be a, uh, an approver or disapprover or modifier or what have you. They, one of their functions is to adopt a school budget. Clearly, there is a series of workshops scheduled, and I'm, I'm sure that that will be an opportunity for parents to come in and discuss that. As far as a process early on, I mean, I, I guess I, re I view the budget as a year-round cycle. I haven't been here for a year, but I know from having done this for years that it is a year-round cycle. The budget decision that comes in May or April or June or whenever it actually comes starts another year. And during that year, people tend to come into the schools in a variety of ways and uh, give feedback to the staff about whether that decision is working or not. Staff among themselves talking about whether that decision is working or not. Um, if there is a better way to take the pulse of the community, non-parent as well as parent, 
Um, I think we're all interested in listening and so forth. But we have publicly elected school board members. They are certainly, I know they get phone calls. I get phone calls. Principals get phone calls. We make judgments about what we hear. We hold meetings. I made, I made reference to that uh, math committee meeting, for curriculum meeting. And those are all ways by which we hear some things from the community. Um, I think it's one of the dilemmas of a tax-funded public school enterprise or probably any public business as to how do you get a total picture. I mean, it's always one of the frustrations that one deals with. Um, but for as far as this particular budget and this particular process, uh, we've been in the process with, uh, I know Peter's been at meetings, I've been at meetings, uh, we've invited parents to come to those meetings, they've been televised, we've been to the town council. Um, there have been opportunities for people to speak up in general. Now, administratively, we have made a proposal to the board and to the board, in a sense, also to the community, and we hope people will respond. Yes. Connie, thank you. That was an excellent presentation. And uh, with regard to the gentleman's question, I, I would agree that there should be public uh, input, of course. I think there has been quite a lot already. Although I don't agree that it's late in the game or this is the end of the process. Uh, I said earlier this is round three. Uh, this is at least a 10-rounder, perhaps 15. Uh, the budget has been presented by the professional educators uh, after a great deal of work uh, to the board, and now the public part of the process starts. And so I'll say what I've said last year and early this year. I hope that uh, there will be a lot more attendance at the budget workshops early on than there were last year. Last year, the board sat for hours and hours, including on weekends with two or three people present. And it was only when the final outcome was known did we encounter the problems that we encountered. So I encourage you, at the risk of repeating myself, please come early and often. I also want to reiterate uh, what Connie said, is that there is a great deal of uh, uncertainty in this budget at this time. Uh, the property tax relief, which we budgeted at only $35,000 last year, uh, turned out to be 70000 But uh, that is gone, and that is really, as I understand it, gone forever. So the increase in our state aid is $305,000. If by any chance in Augusta, in the heat of the budget battle that's going on there, we do not get all or part of that money, then we have a real problem, a real problem. I have uh, circulated around the corridors of the Capitol in the last few days, collaring uh, representatives. I've spoken to a number of people in the educational establishment trying to get a handle on the likelihood of our getting this uh, rather surprising uh, to us uh, increase. Uh, in our state funding. It's about a 17 percent increase. There are many school districts who are suffering significant decreases at the same time we're getting this additional benefit. I do want to state for the record I believe we deserve it. For years, Cape Elizabeth and other towns in the South, uh, because their valuations have gone up rapidly, uh, have not, uh, have, have generally uh, had decreased state aid while other districts have done uh, extremely well by the formula. It seems like this is our turn to do well for a change. But uh, I don't have to tell anybody here or anybody listening how critical and how difficult the state budget situation is. So that's an enormous uncertainty that I think we'll have to live with for a while. And uh, 
several of the representatives and senators that I spoke to uh, intimated that if there were any changes at all, they would happen at the last possible moment. So that is indeed a dilemma. The other major uncertainty, of course, as uh, Connie suggested, is that the outcome of our various negotiations uh, is very much, um, you know, very much a question mark. These uh, negotiations, uh, in the case of the teachers, have just started. In the case of some of the other bargaining units, they haven't started yet. So we have to bear that in mind. Now, anybody have any comments? Any other members of the board? Any comments on the budget presentation? Charlie? I have to commend Dr. Goldman on a really fine presentation and a, and a much improved presentation of the total budget package. I do have some comments, but I'm going to reserve those for the workshops. Anybody else? Any other comments or questions uh, from the public? Okay, the next item on the agenda is the board chairman's report, uh, which consists uh, of uh, Jan Solon reporting on the superintendent's search committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I have a very short report this month. Um, the search committee interviewed five candidates last week and this week, um, and the board will meet in executive session tonight to determine where the search is going to go from here. Um, I would like to publicly thank In by the Sea for uh, giving us the use of their library room to use for our interviews. It was a, a wonderful setting. We were trying to be as professional as possible for a very important position, and I think that uh, we accomplished that task. So, and I would like to thank uh, the committee for all the time that they put in as well. That was donated. Yes, it was given. It was, yes, it was of no cost to us. That's right. An important consideration, but it was a, a very nice gesture. Actually, I will add one item, if I may. Uh, it, it's really a question that I want to pose. Uh, I received, as many of you, you did, a letter from Kathy Carollo about uh, health education, in particular AIDS uh, education uh, and sex education. And letters like this uh, turn up with, with some regularity and quite often with a great deal of thought and preparation uh, going into them. And I want to make sure that while a letter is sent to the chairman of the board uh, with copies to principals, copies to other board members, and copies to the superintendent, that we have some sort of procedure to respond to that and that everybody who's a recipient, uh, starting with me, doesn't depend on somebody else to do something about it because when somebody does put in this amount of work and this is indeed an important <coughs> subject, it ought to be automatically scheduled for discussion in the appropriate forum. And uh, Connie, I'm going to suggest that your office be the coordinating point for that, if you agree. Certainly. I think, as a matter of fact, um, I would recommend that there is an ongoing item on the agenda uh, called communications, because um, without that item, it tends to, the communication may come out in my report or your report, but um, some may fall through the cracks, and I certainly agree with you that um, we do, and I'd be happy to respond to it. I have had some conversations with the nurses about some of the issues that were in there, um, and I will take care of it. Good. Thank you. Unfinished business. Update on roofs. Connie, you're on deck again. Mm. Roofs. Roofs and I foundations. <laughs> For the um, information of the public, uh, I mentioned this in the budget uh, review. Um, the issue of trying to go back and look at the structural um, issues, both that are tied to finishing or completing or actually re roofing, I guess, the D section of the middle school, um, and what would be the appropriate steps to take. Uh, we are going, we have had um, three options presented to us. One is to do nothing for a year, 
possibly because, in fact, the roof has been patched. It doesn't appear to be leaking at the moment. However, we can, uh, it is an old roof. It is definitely worn out, and it does need to be replaced. But given the budget situation in which we are, um, that is certainly an acceptable alternative. It may not be acceptable to everybody, but I mean, from the standpoint of, of options, it's possible. If we put the trusses back on and continue with the plan of the roof as it was originally designed, well, uh, intended to be, it will need structural reinforcement, similar to what we put on, uh, in on connector uh, uh, section of the middle school. And in fact, the other option we have is to put the structural reinforcement in and put another flat roof on there. I know that there are arguments about whether you should be using a truss roof or a flat roof. Um, I, I'm not an engineer, although sometimes I think I ought to get an, an auxiliary degree. <laughs> Spend enough hours listening to the issues. Um, you can, in fact, engineer a flat roof properly. It's a matter of putting the kind of pitch and the uh, appropriate drains and make sure that thing works right. Uh, unfortunately, by the time we put insulation in, which is now required in all public uh, buildings for a renovation job, uh, we are looking at another structural issue. So whether you put the trusses back on or put a flat roof back on, you're still looking at reinforcement. That's what runs the cost up. And the approximate um, figure given to us is somewhere between 60 and 70,000, kind of depending on um, various pieces. Um, so that's one issue. The other issue on the portables. Um, we have buildings, the good news is they're attached to the building, they're uh, handy, they're not out in the mud lot somewhere. But the bad news is that they are footed on sauna tubes which um, do seem to be sinking and or settling somewhat in the uh, topography where they are. Um, and furthermore, we have an additional problem which we've, I've pointed out to you before about the necessity to shovel snow off those roofs um, and uh, it is certainly uh, the engineers recommendation that we uh, when weather permits and when decisions been made but presumably sometime this summer go through a um, procedure where we actually reinsert some extra stresses underneath the building the other option to put in some kind of a shallow foundation would triple the cost uh, I didn't spend a lot of time looking at that option <laughs> Um, and I think it's not advisable given the fact that these are not intended to be permanent structures. Uh, so, but I think we have to look at the shoring up piece. Are all these changes and uh, possible problems that we're having all being conveyed to the, the long term use committee, whatever the title is that Charlie? Space needs. The space, space needs, needs, I'm sorry. Oh, so yeah. that you're all aware of that. So, we're not talking about putting a truss roof or a flat roof on without looking at what the long term. Space Needs Committee is going to recommend. No, and I, th I think that, um, I guess that's the next item. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump no, in. Is, no. Or did we no, we're not on that tonight, <coughs> unless you'd like to report on it, Charlie. We, we are meeting, we have not met since our last uh, school board meeting, so therefore the meeting got delayed. That's so right, yeah. There's nothing new to add because we haven't met. No. I just would like to take this opportunity to inform you that I believe you will be getting a report from that committee urging the council since it's basically a council um, uh, subcommittee or committee uh, to authorize an architect uh, slash engineers renovation study of the middle school um, because every time we look at should we put this roof on or what sure. kind of roof and so on we're obviously dealing with a short-term problem that ought to be in the context of a long-term solution and absent that master plan it's very difficult to know exactly what the best decision is. That's one of the reasons why we were talking about the possibility of not doing anything to the roof for a year in order to get that study completed and to have a really good understanding of what's ahead of us. Um, I have some concerns about that because if it does leak, we have asbestos tiles, ACBs in that building. You already had a problem last summer. Um, we're trying to get some insurance money back from that. I don't, it doesn't look hopeful. But that's another issue that we have to be concerned about. We can't just say, great, it's not leaking, let's leave it. If we do get a leak in that building, you already found out last summer, it's an expensive um, deal to deal with. What, what have we, we looked at alternatives, we have wonderful trusses lying uh, mm -hmm. in state someplace over on the other side of the building. What do we, we have any plans for those? If well, we, I asked the engineers if there was- Garage sales sometime <laughs> early in the possible spring. if we could sell them, should we decide to do that. 
Um, and Dee and I had a conversation about that with him. Well, you know, you've got to find just the right customer. Those have been engineered for a certain span. If we find the right customer, that's a possibility. They're, the engineer is satisfied that they would not have been damaged because they were properly protected and so forth. Um, if anybody knows of a customer out there. You know. There's not a lot of building going on <laughs> in the state of Maine, unfortunately. Thank you. You're That's it for me, by the way. Thank you. <clears throat> New business. Personnel requests. I have two resignations to share with you. I believe the letters were in your packet. Um, the first one from Dr. Mary Shera, uh, and although I haven't been here long and haven't gotten to know uh, Dr. Shera well, I certainly have heard so much about her and the effectiveness of her programs that I am sorry to have to tell you that she is uh, leaving at the end of the school year. However, I certainly think she deserves to be complimented because she is leaving uh, since she's been uh, appointed the president of White Pines College in New Hampshire, effective August 1. So the high school's loss is White Pines College gain, but it is a resignation for us. The second resignation I have is from Susan Hobbs, who has been on leave for the last two years and has decided that she will not return at this time. She's been on uh, maternity leave and uh, says so she was happy teaching in Cape Elizabeth and so forth, but feels that at this time she wants to resign in order to make the commitment to stay home with her young son. So two resignations. Well, I think we ought to start keeping statistics on how many of our teachers are lured away to be college presidents, because it's certainly impressive and flattering. I wish her well, and uh, um, also uh, Mrs. Hobbs and would entertain a motion that we accept those two resignations. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? I would now entertain a motion that, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Oh. Actually, I'm not sure that it's necessary for you to take an action on this. We, we basically set the wheels in motion administratively that I thought it would be good for us to at least discuss it. Um, it has come to our attention on the issue of chemistry books uh, that um, the simple summary explanation of this is that we had a change in chemistry teachers um, at the start of the year. The new chemistry teacher looking at the text then being used felt that it would be advisable to make a, a change but she was a uh, although an experienced chemist, a beginning teacher, and um, was not absolutely certain of what uh, would work with the kids and so on. So she found a text that she really liked, went to her department head um, for permission to at least buy some books. Um, he had available in, in, a, in a science account enough to buy uh, books for two classes, and they regarded this somewhat as a pilot project. That is, would this book be better um, and more popular and more effective with the students than the other one? Uh, it has clearly become uh, obvious to us that it is certainly a more popular and hopefully more effective text than the old one. And um, after listening to some of the comments from students who are trying to share books, um, I've had a discussion with uh, Frank Miles. Uh, he did, in fact, include money in our proposed budget to buy the rest of the chemistry books, and we have decided that the best thing for us to do is to uh, look at the textbook account, which still had some money in it, and to continue that purchase now at this time for uh, use of students um, since the book is obviously proving itself and to reduce the, his budget textbook um, account request for next year. I really, I put action here, but uh, to be honest with you, I don't think it's, uh, uh, you, you don't need to take the action. I want to let you know that we had responded to that. Yeah, I think that's clearly within your discretion. But thank you for telling us about it. Charlie? Mr. Chairman, we had an addition to our packet when we sat down here, and it concerns the 7th and 8th grade trip to the Nelms on March 25th. Is, I know in October we tabled approval of this. Is this something that we have to take action on as a board since they're going out of state? 
No, I think that was um, a misunderstanding on the part of, I think it was my first board meeting, and I was a little puzzled why, when I looked at, up the policy, there is no uh, such uh, provision in your policy. What I think had happened is that Nancy Hutton had had a discussion with Dee about using buses, um, and at that time we had not yet met with our insurers to clarify um, guidelines they wanted us to follow. Typically, um, there is some, you know, the insurers discourage us from sending buses out of state, but they do not forbid us. They're still covered. It's just that their tort law uh, situation, tort law situation changes when you cross the state. And so insurers urge school districts to keep to a minimum the times that they send buses out of state. They are, however, fully insured. And we do make a practice, and you have it for a period of time, made a practice of sending buses on the trip. What was a, uh, so that the reason that came into and got tabled was, uh, an, uh, was a belief on, on Nancy's part that the board had to take explicit action on it. Since then we have checked with our insurance policy, we have looked at the board policy book, and in neither case do you need to take action on it. What is of course of concern to us is the expense of sending the bus down, and the memo I believe, which the students also referred to earlier, does indicate to you how that expense is being covered. And we certainly thank the Parents Association. Frankly, anybody that's willing to have a 3 30, well, get up at <laughs> whatever hour and, and leave on a school bus at 3.30 in the morning, I think is a hero. But I'm willing to say bon voyage, but I am not willing to go. <laughs> You're going to say bon voyage the night before. Isn't it, isn't it the requirement of the, uh, the superintendent to be at these kind of functions uh, and to be there for the... <laughs> Uh, before we close, I'd like to invite uh, Barbara Powers to uh, come to the rostrum to speak about the uh, Pond Cove Parents Association sponsored auction. Before I do that, I'd like to propose that Middle School Parents Association also set up carpools for picking up those children at 315, because <laughs> mine's going. <laughs> I can't drive that time of day. Um, as, as you're real aware, we have a very active parents association within the Pond Cove School community who um, has a dual agenda and purpose of offering parent information program opportunities as well as fundraising. They decided this year in view of um, the budget situation uh, as it was made available to them this fall that they really wanted to step up some of their <coughs> fundraising efforts and chose to take on for the first time a pretty significant program in the um, in the auction that happened at the Senesta Hotel last uh, Sunday evening. Jody Sadiloff and Rhonda Ainsworth de deserve an awful lot of the credit as co-chair of this event. Turned out to be practically full-time jobs for both of them at the very end. They work with a committee of seven other very dedicated parents. Um, there was both a short, and, uh, I'm sorry, a silent and live auction component. Terry Garmy did a wonderful job of being our auctioneer and added a light touch to the evening with a lot of jokes I'll tell you later. <laughs> um, items donated that evening um, came from a variety of sources. Uh, teachers, administrators, and other staff donated items like uh, outings for children, trip to Bookland to choose at your favorite book, ice cream sundaes, picnics, um, to all the way to uh, dinner for eight uh, it's at someone's home. Lots of real strong bidding and interest in the items that the teachers donated. There was a beautiful quilt the special services team made using artwork of the children within their unit. There were also a lot of items donated from parents, friends, and businesses, from uh, airline tickets to gift certificates to professional services, and one item in the live auction was even a two-mile run with Joni Benoit, hmm. um, an alumni of our school, alumnus of our school. Uh, all of these efforts resulted, I'm told by Jody now, in a net profit uh, in excess of $10,500. So it was a really exciting evening. Uh, our thanks, deep thanks, go to the organizers, the donators, and the bidders. So for those of you watching who attended, thanks very much for your support. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. And I think that's a wonderful example of how people can step forward and help us in these uh, stringent budget times. I don't believe there's anything else on the agenda, is there, ladies and gentlemen? And no. I would. Uh, I move that we uh, move to executive session to discuss uh, negotiations and personnel. and personnel issues. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? 
Meetings adjourned.